There is no dispute that antibiotics have saved countless lives. There are so many people alive right now who had a bacterial infection that 200 years ago would have killed them that very easily just dealt with it by taking a course of antibiotics for a week or two and they're still here, happy, healthy, living their normal life. But like so many things in life, there is a negative side to antibiotics. They have a massively negative effect on our gut microbiome, which is that ecosystem that lives in our gastrointestinal tract, predominantly in the colon, but throughout the whole thing, where we have trillions of different bacteria and fungi and other things that live symbiotically with us. In fact, without that microbiome, we wouldn't survive. So before we go and bombard that microbiome by dropping a hot napalm bomb on it, which is what happens when we take an antibiotic, we really need to be certain that taking the antibiotic has more pros than cons in it, or in that decision, and we need to know how to recover from the damage once we've done that. So let's dive in. So how do antibiotics work? Well, before we even had developed them, in some ancient civilizations, they'd been using molds and plant extracts to already treat some infections. But obviously, early 20th century, we managed to get it into drug form and we're able to use it quite frequently. And so a lot of these infections that were killing people because people were having diarrhea and getting malnourished or pneumonia, were probably the two most common things that would kill people that we no longer have doing that thanks to, well, first of all, cleaner living and sanitation have got of some of that spread but when you get those infections antibiotics come in and wipe it out just like that but every time you take an antibiotic you will be left with a certain amount of antibiotic resistant bacteria so this is why i've always been a big proponent for not taking antibiotics for things that you don't need it the stats show that about 98 percent of all kids ear infections are viral so that means only 2% of your kid's ear infection should ever even have antibiotics, but they're thrown at kids like candy, sometimes because mom and dad are pushing for it, sometimes because the doctor just wants to write a script and get you out of there. But every time your child is taking those, they're developing more and more resistant microbes to those antibiotics. And eventually they may sadly need antibiotics for life-saving bacterial infection. And if you've had a ton of antibiotics in the past, they may not work. Whereas if you barely had any, let's say you have a child who had no antibiotics and at 30 they run into a very nasty staph infection or something the antibiotics will probably work very quickly very easily if you have a child who'd had 25 um, sets of antibiotics as a kid and they run into that same infection they may a much much higher risk so this antibiotic resistance is becoming a massive massive issue the use of antibiotics has skyrocketed from 2000 to 2015 the stats show that it went up by 65 percent i haven't seen any stats from 15 to now but i imagine it's even more than that so we keep overusing these antibiotics these very clever bacteria want to stay alive they have a will to live and thrive and survive and so they do their best to resist what's going on. And this isn't just a small problem. Every year, antibiotic resistance contributes to approximately 215,000 infant deaths around the world. And that's a big number. That's not something that we can sneeze at. So now what do we need to do? Well, first of all, we need to make sure we're only taking antibiotics if we absolutely need to. I have a six and a half year old daughter who's only ever had them once. And that was a little under a year ago. And that's because she had a strep infection that had become quite nasty. She's never had ear infections, never needed anything. Everything else she'd had have just been small viral infections that were able to handle naturally at home. In fact, she's never had a medication until that. And then we had the infection under control and we probably, well, not probably, we stopped everything a day or two too early in hindsight. We didn't know that. Then that strep infection came back with a vengeance and you could tell by the swelling, the pain in her voice that she probably had an abscess starting in there as well. So you can't mess around with that. No matter how much you want to avoid taking antibiotics or medications for your child, that needed antibiotics. She needed it for about three or four days and she was good to go. But now I've spent the next six months after that healing and regrouping her gut microbiome because Let's go look at what the studies show on that. So there was one study by Pelagia or Paeja, I don't know how to say it, in 2018. They found that in children, there was a possibility that the gut microbiome was restored in a month and adults one and a half months. But in the same time, they show that 180 days later, there were still nine common species that should be found in their, their gut of good bacteria that were missing. So I don't
don't know how they could say that things had been restored in a month. Because usually what we're finding in most research is that somewhere between three to six months, every time you take antibiotics, that it takes to restore that gut microbiome. And why does that matter? Well, if your gut microbiome is weak or there's poor diversity, your immune system's not gonna function properly. You're at far more risk of getting leaky gut, which leads to a whole host of autoimmunity problems. And so you've got short and long-term effects that can be really quite damaging to your overall health. So just some of the conditions being linked to long-term antibiotic use in kids are obesity, asthma, allergies, and irritable bowel disease as they get older. So these things don't always show up when they're kids, they often start to, but you're far more likely to have those problems as an adult. Hey, Dr. Rodney here. If you wanna get my free PDF, Five Hacks for Boosting Your Immune System, just go into the description of this video, click on the link, download it, and if you have any questions on it, just send me a message and I'll help you out with it. If you had a lot of antibiotic use as a child. So it's probably unavoidable for all of us to fully go through life without needing antibiotics. I needed to take some about 10 years ago. I had a cut on my leg, mowed the yard, and clearly something got into it, and my leg started swelling up like crazy, took antibiotics for two days, it fully went down, I haven't needed them again since, but it was unavoidable. So what do we do if we do need to use antibiotics? How do we best protect ourselves? Well, for the next six months, you wanna really work on gut protection and gut healing. So that means eating some polyphenol rich foods, things like berries, green tea, pomegranate, olives, turmeric. Consume the right type of prebiotic soluble fiber, apples, green bananas, broccoli, cauliflower, avocado. Try some fermented foods, sauerkraut, kimchi, that can help, but definitely take some prebiotic supplements. I really like the HMOs by Layer Origin. To me, they're the best I've found out there of all the different prebiotic supplements. I and everyone in my family takes that as a daily, just preventative anyway. And I think if you're gonna take something daily, prebiotic supplements are far more important for you than probiotics. Probiotics can create an imbalance and a gut dysbiosis, just like antibiotics can create. Probiotics are great if you're targeting certain deficiencies or you're mixing up the strains occasionally, but for a daily preventative or maintenance, there's nothing better in my opinion for the gut than a good quality prebiotic supplement. So if you or your child must use antibiotics, first question the doctor and make sure, is this truly a bacterial issue? Do I really need to take these? If yes, don't fight it on a bacterial infection. They can get nasty and out of control. So if you've shown it's not a viral infection, you need them, then great, take them. But immediately start healing the gut and don't stop for at least six months. And then a lot of those things you're doing, you should be doing anyway. Eating those prebiotic foods, taking a prebiotic supplement, eating some fermented stuff, eating polyphenol rich foods. They're good things to do every single day anyway, but you just have to be far more consistent and disciplined with it when antibiotics have been used. So if you've got more questions about prebiotics, probiotics, I've got another video on why you shouldn't take probiotics every day and I talk about those two things. Um, but otherwise hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on this kind of material on top of what we already have on the channel.